Hello everybody, Father Sean here. I hope you all are doing wonderful this fine day. I am going to be speaking about original sin, and I believe you already knew that. I am going to be drawing a little bit from Genesis, but really I'll be talking a little bit more biblically from St. Paul in his letter to the Romans. And then I'll offer an image that I think can help really dive deeper into what it means, this original sin. And then thirdly, I will make a few conclusions about who is saying, there's no original sin, we don't need original sin, blah, blah, blah. So firstly, in Genesis, we know that Adam sinned. Adam and Eve sinned. This was the original act of sin. And after that, all human beings have fallen. We have all fallen from this original harmony that we would have had with God, this original righteousness that we have had with God. Righteousness being in the sense of right relationship. We have all fallen with Adam, and we are all in great need. Uh, St. Paul says in chapter 3 of Romans, There is no one just, no one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have gone astray. All alike are worthless. There is not one who does good. There is not even one. And he goes on and on and on. He's quoting scripture at that point. Now we can also jump ahead a couple chapters, and we can see the importance of original sin and our union, this mystical union with Adam, but also it means that we have this mystical union with Jesus Christ. This is the beauty of, of the flip side of original sin. Therefore, St. Paul says, just as one through one person sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all, inasmuch as all sinned, so it is with Christ. For if by the transgression of one person death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one person, Jesus Christ? So that's the biblical foundations in a nutshell. The conclusion is that we have this doctrine, this teaching of original sin that is very clearly part of Revelation, that there is no one who is in a good relationship with God. We are all outside of the relationship with God, except for those who have united themselves with Jesus Christ. That is to say, we all need Jesus. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, Buddhist, uh, you're just a non-religious person, or if you're kind of a, a follower of kind of newer pagan ritual stuff, or even if you're a Christian. All of us need Jesus Christ. Now, here's the image that is a little bit difficult. I will give you a little bit of a warning there. It's appropriate. It's definitely appropriate. But it's just difficult because it's sad. The example is a woman who is expecting a child, but this woman has an addiction to drugs. This is the sad part. And when that child is born, you realize that this child will have the same chemical addiction to the same drug. It's just the saddest thing in the whole wide world. It's kind of how it is for us. Adam and Eve sinned. They're the ones who have entered by their choice into an addiction to sin. We, when we are born, have been received into the same addiction to sin. The same addiction to sin. It's not because we have sinned. It's not to say that that little baby that a mom is holding in her arms chose to sin. But we can also say that that baby needs Jesus Christ and was not born with a relationship with Jesus Christ, though Jesus Christ calls that baby to himself. And he says, let the children come to me. There is a need. There is a need. That baby is born with this original addiction to sin and is lacking this original righteousness that Adam and Eve did have before their sin. And there's other result as well. There's another conclusion that we can continue to draw from this image. There is a chemical drug that can be given to that baby to help cut that addiction, to eliminate the chemical dependency. And it's the same thing for us. The grace that Jesus Christ won for, his, for us on his cross, he applies that to us, even as children, even as babies, through baptism. And it cuts that addiction to sin. It is a real spiritual happening in the soul of the child. That's why we give this wonderful sacrament to children, to babies, because we can free them from this addiction to sin. 
Now, people are also thinking, well, when that kid grows up, as soon as he's like six, he, I know he has sinned. <laughs> well, this is a similar deal with, again, that, that child who was born to a mother with an addiction. Maybe that addiction was cut. But at the same hand, that child will have, quite likely, long-term effects because of that addiction. Because those chemicals wreak havoc in the brain. And therefore, when that child goes up, it's going to have perhaps mental disabilities or relational disabilities, behavioral issues, whatever it is. It's going to be a long-term effect. And it's the same thing with our original sinfulness. Again, through no fault of our own, just like that child born, we have inherited this addiction to sin, and it warps us. It warps us. Even when that addiction is cut, it affects our mind that we have a difficult time knowing what is true. It affects our will that it's hard to do the good, and in fact, there's this malice that has been introduced into our will. And it also uh, sets our desires crazy. It's hard for us to desire what is true, good, and beautiful. And I think this example of this mother with a, a child, and they're both in this addicted situation, really helps us with understanding our situation and our relationship with sin and sinfulness in general. Now, a few conclusions here. There are people in the world, you will hear them. You will hear them in the pews of the Catholic Church, unfortunately, and they will tell you that it is enough to be a good person to go to heaven. That is not true. You should be very aware that it's not true. Because what the heck is a good person? A good person might be someone who just doesn't offend any other people, who just doesn't get on anyone's bad side, who just treats everyone with niceness, maybe not even with respect, but they at least just, you know, live and let live. There's, there's this platinum rule out there. You know, the golden rule is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But now there's this platinum rule that is going around that says, do unto others as they would have you do unto you. Without recognition of what is good, what is true, without is beautiful, you just, you just don't interfere. And this is love. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> uh, this is worldly love, not Christian love. Christian love says that you need Jesus. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And without Jesus, the doors of heaven will be shut. Now Jesus died so that the doors of heaven could be opened and everyone has access to the same doors and all they got to do is walk and follow Jesus. Now we should also recognize that the way is narrow and the path is difficult and there are few who walk it and find it. That's also relevant to note as well. But everyone has access to Jesus Christ and everyone has access and the ability and the grace within them to convert and walk to him. I'm not offending anyone when I say you need Jesus in order to get to heaven. I'm, because I'm also saying, I'm offering you Jesus. This is my gift to you. So as often as we say that there is this teaching of original sin, that all of us are born into this addiction to sin, that we are born not in a good relationship with God, we're also saying that you need Jesus and you can have Jesus and he's so accessible. He's so ready. I will do everything I can in order to give him to you. This is what us Christians, us Catholics mean by original sin. May we live it. May we not follow the doctrines of the world that teach it's enough to be a good person. We need to be holy persons, persons who have just given ourselves over to Christ in loving obedience to him. May God bless you, and please say a little prayer for me. And again, tune in to Father Sean's podcast because I'm going to talk a lot more about the, the origins of human beings, the origins of human beings, and more on original sin. God bless y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.